He is Sean Ford from the Purchase Line School District, and our conversation brought to you by Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. Sean, good morning to you. Good morning, Todd. Good morning to everyone. It's good to have you with us here today. Of course, uh, these days, it seems every conversation has to open up with, hey, what are you doing with COVID? Um, <laughs> I note the, the dashboard uh, says that you've had a few cases there at Purchase Line, but uh, you continue to plug away and uh, you're going uh, with both of your buildings open, and uh, so let me just lead by asking you, uh, how has the COVID response been, and especially as regards the new mask policy, how how people handled that? Um, as far as the actual COVID cases, um, we've we've we're I think we're at eight right now, all at the high school. Uh, we have we um, none at the elementary right now. We've had our court we've been quarantining like everyone else has been doing that. So thus far. Um, Thus far, we're doing well in that area, um, um, and so now when you, you throw the mask in, you know, we've had a good response. Um, we have people, we're working with people as they're trying to get exemptions, um, and but overall, we're about 93%. The other folks are working with them to get the exemptions and, and what, what's needed there. So, no, um, overall, um, um, you know, people are, know are angry, they're frustrated, but you know what? Been very, very respectful out here, and I, I just give a credit to our community and their response, and um, and our kids. So yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, it's, it, don't get me wrong. It, it's a very um, political, um, hot topic, and so I, I don't want to make it sound like it's all peaches and roses because it's not. Mm-hmm. But um, our people overall being really respectful. Well, that's good to hear, and and that's really the situation, and it's, it's the new reality. And uh, yes. un- unfortunately, every issue becomes a, a question of, uh, especially when there's a trust issue, of uh, whether or not people are going to comply despite their objections. Uh, and and I know that's your hope. If even if you have an objection, you have to realize that it's a mandate from the state. It's it's not necessarily the way that a school district wants to go, but there's really no choice in the matter. No, I said it, I said it last night, Todd, to, after the meeting, as in my comments, I said, you know, sometimes. You know, the, our our boards are just in such an untenable position right now. Well, you know, our boards uh, live live with all the community members. They go to church with them. They attend ball games, and oftentimes they believe the similar with them, and they're as frustrated. But they're having to make decisions that they don't necessarily like because that's what you have to do. We don't get to pick and choose what, what order or what mandate we follow, nor do we want to because there can be those consequences for districts that we, you know, we always want to be cognizant of any choice we make now could have a future consequence. And, 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 and so, I, you know, our, I feel for our board members. They're, they're in tough, tough situations and tough spots, and, and they're having to make decisions that sometimes they don't like, but, um, you know, they're making the right decisions. Yeah, well, that's one of the things I've always said is we have to understand these are people with regular jobs. They're just regular folks, and that's a really tough position to do, and they're doing it voluntarily, and so uh, they are, they're worthy of our praise. And so, Absolutely, so, absolutely. All right, so we're three weeks into the school year. Uh, we talked with you uh, just a week or so ago about uh, uh, Purchase Line and its online offerings and things of that nature. Within the buildings themselves, how have it gone for the first three weeks? Have there been any snags? Or you're moving pretty smoothly along. I, from, a, from an academic perspective, um, you know, I think, I think we're moving it along. I think we, some of the new initiatives, we're, we're trying to really stay focused there. We're trying to, we're trying to kind of drown out the noise of, of, of what's happening around us so that when our kids are here in school, let's focus on what, what, what our plans. Let's, 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 let's execute the plans. And I think overall that's happening. Um, naturally, you know, when you have a lot of quarantines and those things, those disrupt your system. And, 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 and so it's a constant juggling and balancing act. And, and I, we're better than we were a year ago at, at doing remote learning with the quarantine kids. Um, we're still not experts in that area. And, and we're still we're still better when we have kids in school, and that's where we excel. Um, but I we keep growing in that area and getting better. But there's always room for improvement in that area for sure. Yeah, um, and and one of the things that you have to do, and I, I noted on yesterday's uh, agenda, uh, is you have to explore every avenue when it comes to 
uh, dealing with COVID situations within within the school building and within the the context of uh, of a single day, things can change that quickly, and uh, oh, yeah. and all of a sudden you are having to pursue a whole different direction in education, and that's really really difficult. It puts pressure on you as an administrator, but on the faculty and everybody else as well. So I know that uh, your faculty is a real key to making things run as smoothly as they have. No, absolutely. You know, we've and we've tried that. We've tried to pre-plan for that. We have what we call liaisons at both buildings. So when we have kiddos who who have to go on quarantine, um, we have teachers that reach out and they kind of orchestrate that the, the, between the classroom teacher or the or the teacher of instruction at the high school. The, those those liaisons kind of try to work with the family, so we try to reach out, we try to do that. Um, so it is, it is. We tried to put some of those processes in place at the beginning of the year to have that set, um, and, but it, it is. I mean, you, you all of a sudden you can have a situation where you have to, you know, you have 20 quarantines that happen within 15 minutes, and so then your the administration, the teachers are just they are they have to be very. I, the key word there, Todd, is flexibility. They ha- people have to be flexible in this environment. Yeah, absolutely, because uh, you have to scramble pretty quickly once you oh, find yes. out that there's something there. Uh, the the kids that have not been exposed, uh, they have to be separated from the kids that have and, and then that are going into quarantine right away. So uh, that is quite the challenge. Is it different in terms of uh, where you sit when you have another building in the district, even as close as, as one building is to the other, as the high school is to, is to the elementary, is it different for you in dealing with issues at the other building? No, not too much. It, I would say it's pretty similar. I mean, we're, we're close enough here that I, I don't think there's a whole lot of difference from my perspective. Um, um, naturally, you know, I can get to both buildings. I have access to both buildings. And, and today with phone call and technology, I, there's not much difference, Todd. Yeah, well, that, that's good to hear. All right, so let's talk extracurriculars at Purchase Line. Of course, uh, we think of the uh, football season getting underway, uh, and, and that has, along with the other sports schedules, and uh, sports are a big part of what's going on, but so is uh, uh, other things, um, band and and uh, plays and all of those other things. They all have their own special sort of set of circumstances too, do they not, when it comes to COVID? Yes, I mean, all to, yes, I mean, there, there's, you know, we, we, we have our whole athletic health and safety extracurricular. So, I mean, even things such as, um, you know, we have the meet the teacher night at the elementary coming up. So we've, we've, we've tweaked that a little bit this year. We're going to limit the number of people. We're going to do it in shifts. Um, and so, we're, we're we're trying to we want to we want to have all those events and I, I've 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 shared with our principals we want to have them all but we need to be smart we we want to we want to not do the normal gathering in the cafeteria where we have a lot of people because what we're trying to do here is we're trying as you just stated we're trying to go to school five days a week we're trying to make sure that our, our all of our activities are running so if we have to be a little bit flexible in how we run those activities. I would rather run them, maybe have some flexibility in there, but we keep them open and we keep going. So that's kind of the goal, Todd, that we're looking to do. Yeah. Technologically, uh, keeping up with everything that is demanded of you? Yes. Um, I, I think we're in a good spot with technology. Um, um, you know, we, we, we've we added additional, we're, we're adding, so, you know, I used to say curriculum and instruction. Now now it's curriculum, instruction, assessment, and technology. You know what I mean? And so yeah. we're, at, we're adding, uh, as part of some of our new initiatives, we've added um, programming that, 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 that has some, you know, um, for the students to be working on. So it's a more of a blended learning model. That's where we're, that's the direction we're headed into the future. Um, uh, I, I believe that the teacher is still the key in the classroom. You can't, you can't replace relationships. You can't replace culture building. You can't, but you have to blend that technology in. And I think um, we're, we're, we're in a good spot, but we have a long way to go and we're going to continue to go in that direction. And you can actually then turn that uh, technology to the advantage of the student, maybe in ways that before the pandemic hit you hadn't thought of or or didn't have the capability of technologically now all of a sudden there's another avenue to their education that a teacher can use to to guide them and to expand their horizon a little bit more you you take a program like a I'll give you an example it's a it's called IXL and IXL actually you know students can the teacher can teach a lesson and then the students can get on this IXL it it the IXL is not a pre-list of of questions 
it, it's an it's a AI-based artificial intelligence that actually bases the response. So when you and I would respond to the same question, your, your answer and my answer might be different. Then the next question out will pinpoint exactly where that student's at. And so we're trying to we're trying to log in, and a lot of people use IXL across the area. I mean, it's a pretty common um, um, program, but that's the technology that we need to be utilizing because it really personalizes the learning for each student, and and that's that's where you want to lean on technology um, going into the future. So yeah. it's 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 pretty fascinating to look at that. And as a, as a 55 year old man, you know, um, it's probably harder for me than some of our young. I talk to some of our young teachers and our students, and they pick it up real quick. I have to study it and learn it. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> well, then my excuse is I'm much older than you, so I can, <laughs> I, I can use that excuse forever. I said uh, the technology is fascinating, Todd. I, that we, uh, we, we, my wife and I had sold a house and purchased a house. We did everything this year. We never saw anyone in person. We did it all through our cell phones. We signed all the documents and everything wow. right through our cell phones. And I said that's just where we're headed in, in society. So. Yeah, yeah, educationally and in other avenues uh, yes. within our lives. Yes. Uh, that's that's amazing what is able to be done today. And, and you're right, the way that a... Uh, uh, a program can adapt uh, to the student, and the student adapt to the program at all. They work together with the teacher, and it's a pretty amazing thing. Sean Ford, thanks so much for visiting with us today. Yes, thank you, Todd, and um, everyone stay safe out there. Good plan, good plan. Have a great right. one. It is yeah. the voice of Indiana County, WCCS, 101.1 FM, AM 1160. AM 1160.